All right, this is our fourth set of notes from chapter 10 on the theory of VLE. And so here we'll discuss the extension of uh, our cubic equations of state to modeling multi-component mixtures. Take home message is gonna be, the devil of using cubic equations of state to modeling multi-component mixtures is KIJ. What that means is, well, let's talk a little bit more and find out. All right, so uh, in the textbook, um, we make use of Van der Waals, uh, SRK, and Peng Robinson cubic equations of state. Remember, there's many more out there, okay? But the general idea is, is if you can use or work with these three cubic equations of state, you can work with, you know, any of them, okay? So there's lots of cubic equations of state out there. How you would choose one for a particular application is going to be based on experience, right? And as I, you know, resource I keep bringing up, um, you know, in these notes and in class is, you know, you can consult um, properties of gases and liquids by pulling Prozitz and O'Connell. And so, you know, here we'll just work with the SRK equation of state, uh, but the principles are true uh, regardless of, of your equation of state of interest. And so here, here I just have, um, you know, our uh, SRK equation of state. So P is equal to RT over V minus B minus A over V times V plus B. Okay. B, again, is meant to count for uh, the excluded volume of my molecule. So this term accounts for uh, repulsive interactions. A uh, is, in theory, uh, meant to account for attractive interactions uh, between my molecules. Okay. And so we uh, leverage uh, three parameter corresponding states theory. Okay. And so what I mean by that is, you know, A and B, I can relate to my critical temperature, pressure, and a centric factor. Okay. Um, and so if I know TC, PC, and omega, you know, to give in temperature and pressure, then, you know, I could calculate my parameters uh, and, you know, make my uh, predictions, okay? So now this is written for a pure component system. So then the question is, is, okay, we have cubic equations of state for pure component sy systems, you know, can we apply them for mixtures? And if so, how do we do it? Okay, so remember what we said makes mixtures so unique and so challenging in terms of modeling. Okay. So if I have a beaker and it contains just methane, okay? So in a beaker of just methane, right, in terms of intermolecular interactions, I have just methane interacting with methane, right? It's this nice homogeneous mixture, right? And you know, our you know cubic equations of state work wonderfully well for that system. Okay. The challenge now comes if I were to mix methane with, I don't know, um, benzene. Okay, now I have a binary mixture in which I would have methane interacting with methane, benzene interacting with benzene, but now I also have these cross interactions in which methane is interacting with benzene. So it's these cross interactions which make modeling mixtures really complicated, okay? So if I have just methane interacting with methane, right, and you know, you should be able to, you know, kind of make the extension that based on just pure component properties of methane then, you can gain some insight in terms of how the molecules are interacting in that system. Now, when I go to this binary mixture, the challenge is, is going from just pure component properties of methane and pure component properties of benzene, how can I make this leap then in terms of trying to, you know, predict how methane's gonna interact with benzene, okay? So, you know, how that's gonna be done using the equation of state is via a mixing rule, okay? So there's lots of different mixing rules out there and in general, they're gonna have the same limitations, okay? And so what I have, you know, represented here by the system of equations is a very simple mixing rule known as the Van der Waals mixing equation, okay? And so the general idea is, remember, B is corresponding to excluded volume, A is uh, corresponding to um, intermolecular interactions, okay? So excluded volumes, uh, not too big of a challenge, right? So B of my mixture, Okay, so you know, if I want to apply my cubic equation of state to mixture, B and A now are, are of my mixture. So B I just take to be a molar average of my pure component Bs, okay, where my pure component Bs I could get from this expression, right, just evolving uh, TC, PC, and omega. Okay. In terms of A now, it becomes a little more complicated. Okay, where A becomes complicated is for a given component, okay, for a given species, I could calculate A using this equation. So if I know TC, PC, omega, and my temperature of interest, then I could calculate A, right? My attractive term for each species. But 
knowing the attractive term for each species, how can I use that to gain some understanding about the attractive term on my mixture? You know, how can I, you know, predict how component one's gonna interact with component two? Okay, and so, you know, to make that leap, okay, we have our mixing rule here, where now this is gonna be based on a geometric average, where um, I am multiplying by this term one minus kij, okay? And so what does kij do? Okay, remember a is corresponding to my attractive term. And so what's gonna happen is, okay, if I have kij and it's equal to zero, okay, kij is equal to zero, well, then my cross interaction is just gonna be that geometric average, okay? But now if I take kij to be greater than zero, okay? So if kij is greater than zero, okay, so say it's 0.5, this term is now gonna be less than one, okay? And so what that's gonna do then for you is it's gonna scale down your cross interactions, okay? So compared to the case of having kij of zero, a kij of say 0.5, would result in this prefactor uh, being uh, less than one, okay? It's gonna scale down my cross interactions. Okay? If kij is less than zero, so say it's negative uh, 0 0.5, now I have one minus uh, negative 0 0.5, that's gonna increase this term. I'm gonna get you know, a term here that's greater than one. It's gonna scale up my cross interactions, right? It's gonna strengthen or increase my cross interactions, okay? The challenge is, is that, you know, if I'm given a binary mixture, you know, what kij should I use, right? kij is completely arbitrary, okay? And so the real issue of using cubic equations of state to model, you know, mixtures is in the pure component case, okay? So if I'm just modeling methane, right, a cubic equation state is a predictive model. It is awesome. If I know TC, PC, and omega, I can use that to get my parameters for a cubic equation of state, and I can predict all of the properties I could possibly want of methane, right? And hopefully if I pick the right cubic equation of state, it does really well. But now as soon as I mix two components, right, I lose that predictive nature of my cubic equations of state. And why I say that is because I have this darn kij, right? The value of kij is typically adjustable, right? And so if I wanted to model a binary mixture, I'd get my A and Bs for my pure component systems, okay? Um, you know, B, I, my mixture I could just calculate here is my arithmetic average. But then when it comes to A, right, what I would typically have to do is fit Kij to match my cubic equation of state to some, you know, sort of reference property, right? And so, you know, when doing so, our cubic equation of state for mixtures aren't truly predictive, but they need to be fit or trained on you know, some set of data, or you need at least, you know, one data point to pin down uh, that Kij, okay? So, you know, I should also mention, though, there are some, you know, predictive uh, mixing rules out there, okay? And, you know, there is a lot of efforts devoted to developing better and better cubic equations of the state, um, but in general, we still have this issue of, you know, the general idea being, you know, our equations of state are predictive and pure component systems, when I have mixtures, now we need to account for cross interactions. So the challenge is always given just pure component properties, predicting the properties of a mixture, right? Accounting for these cross interactions. And so essentially always you'll have this issue then of needing some you know, data for that mixture to train your equation of state on, okay? And so, you know, say here, you know, this Kij is <laughs> the most uh, unattractive feature of um, cubic equations of state, okay? And as I just mentioned, right, the challenge with Kij is it's an adjustable parameter and its value is not known uh, a priori, right? You don't know its you know, value in advance. Normally it's found by uh, fitting or training on um, some reference property or some reference set of data, okay? And that's the end of that set of notes.